like I said, it became very quiet and that, that was more than I even expected. So I'm really happy that you're here in this class, the online healing class, and that we're um, coming together to, to um, yeah, to awaken, to, to come to, to listen to Joel, for instance, when he's uh, speaking in the government of Eden. That's the book we're going to use, the chapter, chapter two, we're going to take a section out of that uh, called Mistaken Identity. And um, like I said, first of all, we're quieting down, we're relaxing deeply, we're leaving behind what we don't need and what we um, maybe are still concerned with, but leaving it behind for this half hour, for this 45 minutes or hour, or who knows what's going to happen. So your attention is needed to stay here, to, to stay focused, to stay in this, um, say, attempt to come into the present moment and receive the gift that is given to you um, by quieting down your thoughts, by allowing yourself to have some space between your thoughts and, um, yeah, to take away, like to let go of your concerns for a moment already leaves more space in your mind to um, for something else to come into you to come into your mind so the the whole offering today um, has no other purpose than to share the joy of remembering who we are and that is quite an ecstatic um, feeling because it's like look at what we're trying to do here look at what we're uh, what the purpose of our meeting is that is a very sacred meeting that we have and so i'm really happy happy that you joined in your own temple so to speak where you become still to remember who you really are and say so everything can help with that in terms of everything is pointing back to where you came from where what you where you originated and um, so in the chapter with uh, mistaken identity, Joel shares with us that Jesus really wanted his disciples and everyone around him to remember uh, who they really are and recognize each other as the Christ. And so that's our opportunity too in this moment to come to the recognition of your Christhood and to see that in your brother uh, so that you can also see it in yourself or recognizing it in yourself and seeing that it is reflected by your brother. Uh, wonderful. So suddenly you, you recognize that you're joined with your brother and that there is no separation. And when I say brother, it's also sister or it's, it's not really gender um, specific at all. Um, so just for me, it's easier to say just brother. <laughs> Um, so here we go. Um, I wrote in the website, I wrote just about 40 things to consider uh, connected to the idea of mistaken identity. And why did I do that? Well, that was just a given. Um, I was listening to the tape that I'm also posting on the website uh, from Master Teacher. And um, so I thought it was a great, um, almost like an yeah, implosion of um, depth and um, questions that can really stir something up in you, uh, and that is, and that is, that can be totally helpful to allow that to occur to you. There will be some questions that are really stirring something up in you. It's inevitable, and uh, some some might not even do anything to you, but others will definitely do something. And um, so we, we're using that too, to come into the, not so much to look for an answer to these questions, but um, see, and that is actually where I want to come to now is like, how are we listening today? How are we listening in this meeting? What is actually occurring is it is not so much about uh, trying to understand or trying to uh, remember what I've said or what is given by Joel or anything like that. No, it is, it is like 
it is doing something with you. So in this in this moment that we're together, just allow that to occur to you. Try to drop your defenses. Try to be as open as possible to receive what is actually being given, because that's where the joy will be for you, and that's where the excitement is. In that sense, it it, it is. Basically, for me um, personally, to to read those questions uh, brought me into a real deep joy. It's like I'm so happy to read this. I'm so happy to read this because it's all pointing for me in the same direction, and that is uh, my my source. You know, it's connected to. Yes, I'm not separate. No, none of this. Uh, what we see when we turn on our television, none of that is so. Not that's not our reality. And uh, to come into the intimate place inside yourself, where you actually um, feel the gratitude for your connectedness with every aspect of creation, is uh, is the the one thing that is joy itself. And um, I, I love that. So that's why I shared it with you, just because it brings me so much joy. And um, so I'm going to read some parts from the book, The Government of Eden. Um, I don't know if you if you have the book or are able to, to read some of the passengers. Um, wow. The Genesis of Identity. Well, that's an interesting idea, because what happened in Genesis was was basically Adam fell asleep, and um, Adam suddenly became like a human being. He forgot to laugh about what happened in the, in the Garden of Eden, and suddenly discovered he was naked, uh, running around naked in a body, and and that was a whole different thing than he expected, and that he, than he had experienced before. So. It's an interesting choice for this chapter. It's like the genesis of identity. Um, mistaken identity. So I read the first um, couple of lines. We all want to be understood and to be understanding. Most of us wish that those we meet could see into the center of our being, could see what we have been from the beginning, but which has not uh, which no one has yet recognized, not mother, not father, not teacher. So I repeat that again. Most of us wish that those we meet could see into the center of our being, could see that we have been from what we have been from the beginning, but which no one has yet recognized, not mother, not father, not teacher. No one has ever seen what we really are. So that's a, that's a pretty amazing statement. Nobody has ever seen what we are. So in that um, that part taking to us is is this um, it's like the idea of a mistaken identity is like you being brought up by your parents or by whoever took care of you when you were little. It's like they showed you who you are not and they came to build something of like support you in becoming something that you're not and you still can still try to do it as good as you can as parents but uh, you will uh, you will when you live in a like in this uh, community when you live in the neighborhood you will always um, see that you cannot um, allow your kid so your ch child to be as he really is like that is the hardest thing because you always have to deal with some kind of world where the child has to be adjusted for and the child has to be raised in and it's not for everyone that it is like that but um, like there are hardly any stories of people that were awake when they were a baby that's quite uh, unusual. And on the other hand, if you really look at a child, you see how connected they are. If you look at a baby, you see that they are extending love like nothing else. Like they, they are completely, um, say, um, yeah, 
completely in relationship with uh, they can't distinguish between the mother or themselves so that is that is something that is for everyone um being born in this world uh, the same you know it's like that is your starting point now you're going to be raised and you're being taught that you're something else and that you have to do your best in order to become something or become someone and uh, yeah even the school teachers they they miss that too of course it's like it's unbelievable like no that is not what i am and you want to raise my child like that well it it has to be that way and and that's just the way it is but um it's like that has nothing to do with who you really are so then you build your life you you seem to live in a timeline you you set up your life and come into an um, adulthood in that sense in which you really become steady in your uh, say misidentification and by the time you're th you're 30 you you probably have enough problems to to start questioning what the hell is going on and so when you move through a little longer you really want a, an, like an alternative to this or you become so uh, full of pain and um, that you get depressed or who knows what what's going to happen to you but it's like that that's inevitable that you you will not be able to say uh, open-mindedly adjust yourself to the world that would be too painful for most of us and that's why we found each other because we we recognize like no this is not what life is this cannot be it there must be an alternative to to what is being presented by the world or what appears to be by the world and um there has to i want to know who i really am because that is the reason why i'm here i want to know who i am i want to get in touch with that i want i want to fully come to life and not and doze off into a and say in senseless life that ends in death so this is a very short story like the way i i shared now with you but um, there's a lot of us that will recognize that as their story it's like you you don't want to continue living as a human being because it's literally there's no way uh, that that can be what life is there's so much limitation there's so much pain and you can of course try to sedate yourself for some time and thinking like okay when i don't feel it that much i can still deal with it or um, when i do this and that that will distract me enough to to at least enjoy my life for a couple of years uh, but see we all didn't do that we like no i i didn't want to live like that i absolutely did not i was not able to do that i was in too much pain and in too much fear about what the hell was going on it's like no matter what i choose it it is not what i uh, thought it would be like there's disappointment after disappointment there's no fulfillment in it whatsoever so yes indeed nobody really saw you for who you are so and that that built an idea like that you let yourself be told who you are when you're you were raised as a child and you started to believe that too and so now um say some years later um some decenniums later um it is like oh my god i i actually have an idea about myself that i'm not good enough or i have an idea about myself that um, no matter what i try to do it will never be um yeah right or um what am I doing? How can I proceed like this? What what is going on in my life? What what can I um, what can I do to make my life complete? So all these all these considerations that you walk around with, and all these things that you're thinking about yourself, might even lead to the idea that you actually don't even want anyone to really know you. So you build a little bit of an, of an um, say, a wall around yourself in which you protect yourself so that no one really sees how you really are. 
because jealous as here in the book is like well everyone wants to be understood and be known like you well if if i would ask you how how would you um what would you think about that that you would be completely known for who you are uh, not for everyone that's an happy occurrence um in the, in the first instance because you have your own ideas about yourself that are not really like um describing your perfection so to speak you know so these things are important to to be aware of that you actually are as a human being at least and as an awakening uh, being you you come in touch with the ideas that you are protecting yourself that you are basically denying your own true identity and you're basically doing that most of the day um, and yeah that's something that you really um, have to admit you know it's like oh my god look at that i i know better i okay i meditate in the morning and i do this and that i i have my repetitions during the day that i really um, stand still and come into my quiet zone so to speak but um, so on the other hand i'm still dosing off literally in in my humanness and walk around in that and have my bumps and and walk up against um, being in conflict and um, judging people and doing this and that so these these are all part of the of the awakening process in which you which you see that part of you is is not um say a part of your day you're you're just asleep in your dream you're asleep and you you are okay with that too like it doesn't even shake you up that much that you do that until you you uh, come into a place where you feel pain again then suddenly you start to pray and then suddenly you start to think like oh my god what's happening how how can i go through with this how can i see this in a different way what can i do in this a situation like this so let's see what joel says everyone longs to be understood but most persons think that means being known as they are humanly that is not what it means at all those who believe that that do so because they do not yet know what the christ that the christ is their true identity and this is really what they would like to show forth The master, Christ Jesus, too, longed to have his true identity recognized and understood. How obvious is this longing, as he asks, Whom do men say that I, the Son of God, am? Who say ye that I am? He longed to be known as the Christ, but he could not walk out and say, I am the Christ. Let us not hesitate, however, to say silently and secretly to everyone we meet, Thou art the Christ, the Holy One of Israel. I know thee who thou art. So Jesus, Jesus wanted his disciples and the ones that he met for him to be recognized as the Christ. And why is that? Well, that is not just as as an say an accreditation or something like now now suddenly you have the Christ um, the Christ badge on your on your on your shoulder so to speak. Now this has something to do with um, recognizing who you really are and seeing that if you don't recognize who you really are then you're actually in pain then you're actually in the, in the death mode then you're actually in the, in the belief that you are in a temporal um, situation that will yeah finally end up in death so to be in the christ communication so to speak is to directly communicate as one 
to communicate as one mind to see that oh my god everything is interconnected we don't even have to to share words in order for us to communicate and the communication that takes place is so joyous and so direct and um, full of yeah it's alive uh, that 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 is um that that is the only way to be alive so we we uh, have the invitation to come to that place all the time so when you read when you listen there's an opportunity for you to enter into that and and that's why we come together that's why we practice this that's why you sometimes need to be shaken up a little bit because otherwise you will not uh, go for that you think like oh no the way it is now it's fine it it works for me it's comfortable um yeah reading a little bit of this and uh, and just um yeah not staying in the middle of the road so to speak and like no actually when you really want to to feel what that means when you really want to go for that when you really want to dive into your christhood um you want anything else to be undone because it is like truth is true and nothing else is true. So it has consequences when you set yourself the purpose of awakening to your Christ mind, awakening to your Christ being. Um, there's a lot of things that, that you will discover that you're still doing, but they are not necessary for your Christhood that are actually just in the way. So that's why I also put on put up some questions on the website, and um, I will read some of them, and not to get an answer on them, uh, but just it will it will touch you in a certain way. Are you convinced that staying in time is beneficial for you? Are you on the way from survival to revival? What are you trying to prove to yourself? Is there anyone to fool? Where's the little small voice coming from? And are you happy with your eternal life? Is there another mind but yours? What is your mind doing, thinking that there are other associations separate from you? There are no opposing powers. Why are you protecting, uh, protecting yourself against? So I'll read some of the last ones too. You think it is possible that someone else is suffering? You think that someone can remedy your situation? How many minds are there? Why are you afraid? Has your body anything to do with reality? So these were just the first 10 and I, I have 30 more for you. <laughs> I have 30 more for you uh, uh, and for myself. It's like, how many minds are there? That's an interesting question. Like we, we have the expression of, okay, he has a mind of his own. And that doesn't really sound like an, a real communicative mind, but um, it, is, it is great to... Um, um, I see a text pop up now. Uh, it is great to discover that there's, if there's only one mind, uh, it is yours. So there is only one mind. But in order for you to discover that, you have to open yourself up and be free of ideas of uh, like a personality privacy kind of um, think mind. And um, so 
I don't want to get into that too deep now, but um, it is an interesting uh, question. It's like, how many minds do you think there are? There's just one mind, you know, there's just one life. And that life I share with God. There's only one life. And it's the same idea as, okay, there's this drop. You, you, you are this drop falling down into an ocean and, and see that you never were separate from that. For just a moment, you appear to be a drop. And now you're back into the ocean, so to speak, into the ocean of God. Okay, so I'm going to read more from the book, um, just to bring more of this in. So here's another one. We have identified ourselves with the body instead of knowing that we're not the body. We are really the soul of the body, the life of the body the mind of the body and the spirit of the body, the consciousness of the body. But we are not the body. We are as incorporeal real as God. For God is spirit and the son must be spiritual. See, that's another shocking statement. That's another shock in your self-identity or in your mistaken identity. Like you're not a body. That's that's an incredible confronting idea. Uh, we all seem to be sitting in front of a screen, um, appearing as bodies, um, all that. You know, it's like. So Joel says, "You know, you're not a body. You you are not that." And so the the thing I brought in the other day too was: is this is like no that, which moves what is the principle that moves the body what is the principle that moves the stars what is the say what is behind the radiation of the sun what is the rhythm of the universe what is behind the rhythm of the universe and what is it that put the waves into motion what is the power behind the wind See, all these things are like you cannot grasp it, but you know exactly what I mean. And that is with this too, with your true identity. It's like, who did create you perfectly? Like that is, that's why you come into awe, basically, and where you start to remember like, oh, I'm so happy to hear this because now I discover, oh my God, yes, indeed, I was created, I am created perfectly. And I'm like totally connected to God. There's never been any separation. How, how great that is to remember that. See, and the things that we do, we read and we sit still and we meditate and we allow these statements to come to us and see how they affect us. And then in a tiny moment where you where you suddenly don't even pay attention, suddenly there's a realization, like where you feel the grace or the, the release of the self-identity. And and you you yeah, you come in gratitude and you say, Thank you, God. Thank you so much for this experience of true communication. So that can be that can be happening right now. Like you you have heard enough to allow yourself that experience it is you're entitled to it and, and nothing needs to happen for it for, in order for you to experience it and one tiny instant is already completely um yeah confirming that relationship confirming that communication and confirming the non-separation So there's not much being asked. It is just, yeah, it is a possibility. So you make use of the one possibility to experience that. And you don't know how to do that. It's coming to you. You're just being open and receptive and see what happens. So 
So I'll read a couple more question, questions from my, from my list. Um, this is also a funny one. Is there a way that you can get rid of yourself? Are you able, are you able to get rid of yourself? How are you verifying your own existence? in your own experience of yourself. Wow. Here it says, you are addicted to the remedy of your own sickness. Go to your bottom. Is miracle mindedness what the will of God is? You can only prove reality wrong by getting old and get sick what is what is getting old what can get sick the problem is not solvable is there another world of love to enter into has it anything to do with the body? What happens if I don't misidentify you? Is being concerned with the content of the dream a help to waking up? Is there such a thing as a future gain? See all these questions and basically point to the same in the same direction. So is there is does future gain that idea of future gain does it make sense? Like no, well if it doesn't happen now Will it ever happen? When we're here to come together in this present moment, um, allowing ourselves to experience completedness, is there anything else that can happen? No. No, there, this is then the only thing there is. So your, the possibility of entering into the present moment with you is recognizing your Christ consciousness. And that is being present here now it has nothing to do with the body and yes indeed you you enter into and um, say a world of love because you feel the connectedness it is not it is not specific it's not um, say people person specific no this is a love beyond understanding So as an exercise, it can be fun to read the list of questions and see which ones are resonating with you. And it can be really nice to take a look at, at those questions and sit with them for a moment and let them, let them tell you the answer by going within and waiting for the answer to come to you. So yeah, recognizing the Christ in everyone you meet. Jo uh, Joel is really inviting us to, to at least bless your brother like that. When you enter into a certain situation or come in touch with certain people, at least to express that, that you want to see that in this person, that you don't want to go for your own first perception about this person or your, your um, say, uh, life experience, uh, past life experience uh, in which you meet someone. It's like, no, there's a, a new opportunity to meet someone. It's completely open and you don't know anything about this person, but you want to see him anew. You want to see him in a totally different way. 
beyond your uh, attack thoughts and beyond your um, judgment. Okay, so we, we come together here in this quiet zone, in this stillness, and basically having all the opportunities to enter into timelessness, to be free of the timeline for a moment until we start thinking again about what to do the next moment or later on today or stuff like that. It's like this is our opportunity to be still and stay with that for a moment. And you can see that you come into that by just allowing that by being still, by not responding, by opening yourself up. And basically by inspiration. So I'm, I can still use the book for a couple of more sentences. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Right identification is a recognition of the truth and that I is God and the ability not to think out of the standpoint of being man limited and subject to human laws. Right identification is a recognition of the truth that I is God. Ignorance of true identity is the only cause of error in our experience. In proportion, as we regain the Father's house, that's the experience of the prodigal, as we determine to return to the Father's house, the Father's consciousness, and realize why God the Father is my consciousness. God the Father is the author of my life, the architect of my life. Therefore, my life must show forth the perfection of its creator. See, and that is my life must show forth the perfection of its creators. My life will show forth if I come into that recognition and come into the direct experience of that. See, that's with all the things that Joel writes. Um, it, is, it is like the... Um, uh, it seems like you have to do something for that in order to give that away. Or, um, But it's like... Actually, it's included in your own personal experience. If you open yourself up for this Christ experience to come to you, that is what radiates immediately. That is what, what is doing it, so to speak. So then it, there's not a doing um, coming from you. No, in that realization, there is no separation. There is nothing but oneness. There is, um, that is why you you know your brother, you know the ones that you meet, because basically you recognize yourself. And then not in personality details, but in, in the truth of who you are. And that's why it's like that is, um, yeah, not to be forgotten in that sense. So in, um, there's not a doing being asked, there's a realization of your Christhood. And when that takes place, when you are able to see your brother like that, or when you come into the experience of it yourself, you you start to see like that. You start to see with Christ's vision, and you come to the recognition of who you are. See, and your certainty in that grows and grows every time you you allow that to to um, grow in you and to yeah expand basically you give it more space inside yourself you're not afraid to to enter into a place that that is not under your control anymore it doesn't need your defenses it doesn't need your identification it doesn't need your accreditation 
like you don't need to be confirmed by anyone around you in order to to come into your um, realization that really comes from within you and then you recognize that there's nothing outside yourself and then you see that you're one with your brother see all these things like this book and uh, questionnaire so to speak all this is is helping you uh, to basically to go within and not looking for it in a place where it isn't where it cannot be found it is just that you become aware of certain thought patterns that you that you still walk around with or that you think oh no it isn't like that oh my god i i wasn't even aware of that i wasn't even i didn't even know i was thinking like that i really have some future goals and i really think that there's um, there's a yeah a certain kind of exchange possible like if i do my exercises well i will get a reward from god for what i do it's like well, there's hardly anyone that doesn't think like that for a moment and it can pass of course but it's like you you're so accustomed to learning by um, being yeah in an exchange mode like if you do that well then you get your reward like no this is completely free of that you don't need to do anything in order to achieve this you don't you it is not by your doing that you get rewarded or anything like that no you are completely rewarded you you are what value is you are what christ is there is nothing else See, and then you discover like, oh, there's still some some uh, patterns that I got so accustomed to and that I s still walk around with and that, that still seem to be determining uh, who I think I am. I really need to let go of those. Like I, I'm not going to, to set my goals in the future. I'm not going to, to uh, think that there's um, like value in doing that. I don't want to to come from an um, say a timeline, a temporal perspective. So that brings it right back to here, this moment that we come together in this stillness, in this quiet time that we're that we spend together. So I'm really happy that you join me in that and that we come together in this class to, to stand still for a moment with the idea of misidentification. See, Joel says it here too. i see if I can find the line back. Um, he says this too in, um, in the same part. Uh, let me see. Ignorance of our true identity is the only cause of error in our experience. See, that's, that's a great line. And, and if you are honest to yourself and see like, okay, so this is the only cause of error in my experience. Like, oh my God, how many times during the day is that happening? Like how many times during the day am I misidentifying? Like there's so much error, so many things go wrong, so to speak, or are not working out or seem to be so full of a conflict or um, see that this is just one line that that is in the book, you know, and that is like you can read over it with. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But if you take a look at it, it's like, oh, my God, actually, I'm doing that all day long like that. It is just seems to be like one mistake after the other. I miss uh, exactly what people are telling me or I already respond to something without even he hearing what the situation was I already know what to think about this and that and I have already my opinions about all kinds of stuff and and I'm wondering why I'm in conflict and I'm wondering why am I feeling so yeah I'm not feeling very um, harmonious actually See, the misidentification is more present than you think in your life. It's like, it's, it's, it's um, say, take some vigilance to really take a good look at it. 
and and become aware of where you are doing that so that's why we come together in a class like this to to remember that and it's like oh yeah I might as well just drop my defenses and be completely honest in that it's like oh my god that's happening all through the day i can't believe it uh, there's always something you know there's, <laughs> there's always something uh, yeah, yeah no see there it is again and you recognize it and it's and that's okay yeah so it's not about perfect spiritual behavior or thinking that you're already so much awake while you're still so much in conflict no you might just as well be honest with yourself and i always come back to that because that's the situation that uh, that you have to deal with in that sense that's the situation where where uh, a new vision can come to if you think that everything is already fine then then that's not going to be helpful to get in come into christ vision okay so i've said quite a bit i hope that you that you can work with this and that you feel the release of the drop of um of defenses um <laughs> for yourself to others like your ad admission is is amazing it's really going to set others free so to speak by being honest about yourself you set others free because you allow them to to do the same and you you literally are not protecting yourself against anything or anyone and that already gives you a totally different um, experience of yourself All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, for spending time here and uh, sitting with me in this class. And um, thank you so much and see you soon.